Hey guys, Troy here again, and yes, I've got some more pens to share with you today that have been added to my collection and I've been playing with. Uh, but also wanted to thank each and every one of you who participated in our last giveaway, where I gave away a Waterman uh, CC pen. That was a uh, cartridge-filled pen, probably from the 1950s. Uh, and that went to uh, one of my viewers named Rick out of Arizona. And that's I don't have any more information that I would feel at liberty to be able to share uh, other than that because I don't have his permission uh, but I will share at least that much because I mean you can look at my YouTube channel and find that out uh, but anyway uh, uh, that went out uh, again to this week and uh, by the time you see this uh, it may be in his mailbox so we'll see uh, but I've got uh, three pens I want to share with you one of which uh, is uh, I want to call it a modern pen, uh, 1980s, 1990s European produced Waterman uh, that was only released in the European market, was not released in the American market. And I've uh, had one of these before, a Schaefer Forum. And uh, I paid a little more for one for my wife just because of the spectacular colors. And it's a student pen, uh, and it was not necessarily something that was an upper end pen. It was a cheapie. However, they came in a plethora of colors and designs. And I got one of the lesser known or uh, you know, the, the, the lesser populous designs for my wife. And I went ahead and got one here for myself as well, only much more plain, much more manly looking. Uh, and also, I've got an old Schaefer, and I'll share that with here with you. And picked up a Pelican, and uh, back when Pelican was using um, a two-numbered system for their pens, uh, and they were trying to compete with uh, some Mont Blanc uh, during that time period and some uh, some skinny Lamis during the time period. So let's go ahead and show you those. All right, guys, here we are. Let's take a look at these uh, three pens. This one in particular was uh, the one that came in first of the three. This is an old Schaefer. Uh, this one had supposedly been uh, reconditioned. It's still got a, uh, a decent imprint on it. Um, and you can see the Schaefer clip uh, on it. It is a lever filler. It's kind of chewed up, kind of beat up. And I didn't pay a whole lot of money for it. It was like 20 bucks uh, or so delivered. There are bouts within a dollar of that. And so, you know, it got kind of beat up. It's got the typical nice long uh, lever that you would uh, typically see on a Schaefer. And it is a, it's in the Schaefer Balance family. And started reading an awful lot about Schaefer Balances after it came in to try to identify which within the Schaefer Balance family it would be. And I didn't find anything really conclusive online. Uh, but I did find some information, uh, Pen Hero website, if you want to go look at that. Uh, Jim has always got some great information, especially about Schaefer's. Um, and I also looked at a few others, but it sure uh, looks like this one here is going to be, wow, an old beater. But, you know, it wrote halfway decent. It's got a uh, number five feather touch nib on it. Uh, and it wrote fairly well. Apparently this had been resacked, but there's some scuffs and stuff that you're just not going to get out uh, when you're working up a pen. Now, I did not restore this pen. Uh, it came totally refurbished in theory unto me. So here we go. Let's take a look at this Schaefer balance. Every time I've written with it the first time, it does that hard little start right there. So I may need to do just a little nib work on it. But it's definitely a fine nib. So it's an old Schaefer balance, probably from the 1940s. In looking at uh, various models online, um, I can tell uh, that, um, that there's a lot it has in common with others. Looked at the nib that was installed um, and compared to others. Uh, and, you know, it, it does okay. It's not top notch, not top quality. This one has an, instead of a celluloid body, everything is a resin or a plastic. Um, and hence, you know, a lot of that scuffing, as you can see. Uh, but, you know, this is a uh, rather fine nib. And doesn't have, you know, a lot of flex, but it's got a little bit to it. And you can push it and get some line variation out of it. And it's not the smoothest thing. I have not done anything to this nib. I have not done any smoothing to it. I have not really played with it whatsoever. And, um, you know, it always starts out a little bit light. So I probably want to give just a little bit of time with this particular nib. Um, I did put in some 
uh, old reliable ink a noodler's bad black moccasin it's a it's a black ink I've whipped out a few times here just recently and uh, one of the things about it you know it's a fairly decent behaving ink I am not worried about putting noodler's ink into a vintage pen why because I have used this very noodler's ink in a bunch of other old lever fillers so just to let you know that's a, the bad black moccasin uh, and that's what the label looks like uh, Nathan has always got some interesting designs on his labels but um, you know I've got a full bottle of it here I plan on continuing to use it and I have not run across that problem in any of my vintage pens using any of Noodler's inks um, some of them are a little harder to clean than others but uh, still I've not had a problem using uh, Noodler's bad black moccasin at all so that's uh, what I've got in this particular pen you know, it's a little shorter than I like. I like this one posted because it's a little shorter. I'm just um, you know, not a fan of really short pens. It's like five inches total in length. So uh, it's okay. I ordered it just to play with it. It's fairly inexpensive. Whether I'm going to keep it, whether I'm going to gift it, I don't know. Uh, but um, you know, it, it's one of those that I wanted to, to play with it. Just be, found a good deal on it, so I went ahead to play with it. This one here, a Waterman Forum. This is the... Uh, this is a pen uh, that is a European only release Waterman um, and it probably came out of the 1980s maybe into the 1990s I've got a little more information here that I want to share with you on that particular pen and uh, you know it's it's kind of a, a plastic French made school pen probably the 1980s up through the early 1900 uh, 1990s and it was made for the European market only it was um, uh, sold at the time for uh, a, what would be about $15 American, uh, maybe f 15 euros or so, uh, and they discontinued at the beginning of the 1990s. And there's still a little bit of packing material that's left in here. This particular pen, as well as the next pen I'm going to show you, came to me by way of Romania. I got those just today. It was in fairly decent condition. It's not my favorite color, you know, this olive color, uh, but it is very uh, reminiscent, uh, definitely, of the forum. Now, this thing was packaged like with an incredible amount of tape and it was you know the out exter external packaging was easy to rip open but the two pens were, were wrapped so hard and tight together now you see here on the finial the W the Waterman and you see that line across you know that's my doing uh, unfortunately just trying to get the packing material undone don't do what I did on my desk uh, I've got a pair of scissors it's usually on my desk well, my seven-year-old had a project that he wanted to borrow my scissors for, and he never returned them to my desk. So instead of getting up and walking out and getting the scissors where I knew where they were and opening up the package, um, you know, I made the mistake of using my box cutter to try to open up that package, and I went a little too deep, and I slit across that finial and that plastic. So that's my fault. That's my doing. It wasn't the seller. Um, and it's got the you know the W on the clip for for Waterman. It does have the uh, typical nib that you would find on a a forum, and uh, you know this particular one I put in uh, into the this forum I put in a Diatrementis Pine Green, and I probably have some ink left over from when I was playing with it earlier, cleaning it up uh, here so. Uh, and you know I ended up with a lot more ink on my hands between this pen and the other I did have to really flush this one out well this one was not uh, even allowing me to flush water through it when I first got it so I had to put it for a couple of times through my ultrasonic cleaner and had to do a lot of uh, bulb syringe flushing and I finally got it so where it would write fairly well uh, I had to do the same uh, and flush out um, the next pen that I'm going to show you so Let's go ahead and give this a shot to write with it. This is a Waterman Forum. Now, this Waterman Forum, I can tell you right now, uh, number one, it's lightweight, it's plastic, so it's going to feel okay if you post it. It's a little long when you do it, but it's not unwieldy. I don't have to post it, so I'm not going to. Uh, but one of the things about this particular pen is this nib is a lot broader than the forums that I'm used to. The forums that I have written with in the past 
have been a little on the scratchy side. They've been a little on the fine side. But this one here is one of the smoother and uh, more medium to broad uh, nibs. And uh, so I would definitely still classify this in the medium side. So this is a Waterman Forum, and this ink is so dark here. And it is a Deatramentus Pine Green. And it, it because it writes fairly smooth, I actually like it. I had to put in a Waterman uh, converter or cartridge into this thing. And in this case, I chose to whip out one of the converters that I still had on hand. I'm running out of Waterman converters, so I'm going to have to buy some more. Um, I bought a whole bag full of them at one point uh, because I have a lot of Waterman pens. Uh, it'll also take the long cartridge or even the short cartridge, but it's designed to be able to accommodate the Waterman long cartridge. Uh, this particular green ink, I'm going to have to smear it for you. This is a lot darker. I mean, this is actually, like I said, this is a pine green. Uh, but this is so dark because this lays down so much ink, it really kind of surprised me when I first used it. So this forum is more of a medium nib, but it's very wet in its writing. My handwriting is not so great today, but it is very smooth. I have not done anything to this nib except flush this pen out, put ink into it, and play with it and start writing. And I'm actually, this one is much more of a pleasure to write with, I think, uh, than uh, my wife's forum. And uh, this one, even though, you know, I messed it up, <laughs> I'm still going to pull this out and write with it more often than I would some of my other Waterman pens, even my more expensive Watermans, just because it's got a very nice smooth nib on it. All right. So there you go. And these are still fairly inexpensive. Uh, so if you look online, I'm sure you can find a good deal on those. Now, the last one I want to talk to you about is a Pelican. doesn't look like a Pelican, though, does it? It's probably not... Uh, anything that you're really used to using, uh, but an M20. No, not like a Meisterstück and not like the, the M1000 uh, or the M800 or 600 or 200. This is back when water, uh, back when Pelican was still using a two-number model system. The production run on this uh, particular pen here, the, uh, the M20, uh, was 1965 up through about 1983 or so. I'm kind of surprised they kept it going into the early 80s. Uh, but back during the 1960s, it became very fashionable to have pens very much in this style. Let me show you a few others by comparison. This is a Lamy 99 from about the same time period. All right. Set those down here next to each other. I'm going to show you an Omos Renaissance. This is from more like the 70s or so, uh, but you can see that you know it's skinny, skinnier. I've got some Watermans that are very much along that line there as well. Um, let's also show you here um, ones like these right here, like a Waterman 32. It's a piston filler. And also, I've got this one. This is a cartridge converter pen, and I showed you this one here just recently. Some people have told me it's a 220. Others said it's a 221. Others said uh, there's two different other models that it might be. So I'm not really sure exactly what model this might be, uh, but these are two Mont Blancs and an Omos. And uh, this one is a Lamy. This Lamy 99, when I first got it, all it took uh, eventually was some more nib work on it. I whipped it out just not too long ago, decided to give it another shot, and uh, did some nib work on it. And now it writes so nice and so smooth. It's probably my favorite Lamy now uh, compared to all other Lamys that I own. I got a drawer full of them. And here we go with this particular, uh, this particular Pelican. Now, um, originally, you know, these were that came out, and they've got different uh, different caps on them. They've got metal caps, different color barrels. I do like the black and the gold because, I've, like I've said before, it's a very classy look. And uh, you can see this is the the logo that they were using at the time. Uh, it does have the uh, a nice. You know, I'll see if I can get a better uh, close up of that later on for you because I'm really not going to be able to focus well here. Uh, but it's got you know a nice little bent 
angle clip. That's one of the things that kind of gives it away uh, that it was an M20. On top of that, it's got the 14 uh, karat nib in the plastic body to it. And it has a fake blind cap here because it's a piston filler uh, rather than a cartridge converter filler. You take it off, and you know they were trying to make a move um, uh, with Pelican, with their quote new Pelicans during the '60s, um, and get into a hooded style nib. This is a semi-hooded sort of nib, uh, but um, there you go, and it's very uh, reminiscent of a lot of different manufacturers during that time period. The style, so you've got a, a nice long uh, section here gold band and it's a slip cap so if you want to post it it does post for you and it does post fairly nice and deep and it's very comfortable to hold like that so let's go ahead and, and uh, do a quick writing sample of here since I still have just a little bit of time left and this one here look at that it's a very wet writing pen this is a Pelican M20 and this was uh, circa uh, from the 1960s through the uh, early 80s. 14 karat gold nib. This one is a, definitely a medium nib in um, its uh, breadth and how it writes. Um, it's got a lot more feedback and it actually sounds more on feedback than it feels. So. Uh, don't be uh, thrown off by that, but it's actually got a semi-flexible nib, which when you've got kind of, uh, when you've got a semi-hooded nib like that, and you've got, if you see that feed, and how that feed uh, comes up to the back of that in that style, I didn't expect it to have anywhere near as much flex as it did, but you can see that it, it actually flexes fairly well. So you're going to get a good amount of line variation. Not the smoothest, but it's smoother than it sounds with the feedback that you're getting. Uh, so what did I put into here? I put in a uh, I put in a Diamine Royal Blue. You can see how wet that writer is. I mean, it's still wet doing that. And that's a lot of what the, the ink that I've got on my fingers today is from playing with this ink and this pen here today. So, well there you go. You know, uh, maybe I'll show, I'll, I'll try to work in some some close-ups here and you can actually uh, see the, the pen uh, a little closer, see some nibs a little closer, see some logos a little closer. But that is pen mail for me for today. Uh, coming up still in the mail, I've got a couple more Watermans that are on the way I'll share with you. Um, I've got an Imperial alt coming still. I've got a couple of uh, Jim Hines pens that are coming. Um, and I'll show you all those when they show up. Thank you for watching. Hopefully you get a few ideas for your collection. Uh, don't be afraid to try a few uh, here or there uh, on eBay maybe. And if you know how to flush and you know how to clean, then just maybe you can get a halfway decent writer. I know that I did. Hey, thanks for watching. Bye.